Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to create this here parametric bench. Alright, I'm going to dive into a new document and I'm going to get started. I'm going to start by dropping down a biarc component because this is what's going to form the basis of our shape. I'm also going to get rid of the current parametric bench just because we don't need that for the time being. Alright, so I'm going to use this line here to define the uh, the start and end points of my <coughs> pardon me of my bench, so I'm gonna reference that in. And key thing to note here is I'm not referencing it in as a line because if I were to reference try and reference a line in, what it's gonna ask me to do is draw out the line. Whereas what we want to do is we want to just be able to set the line that's already there already exists just like that. And so we're gonna grab the endpoints of that. Oops, sorry. Endpoints of this curve. I'm going to plug that into my start and end of my by arc. And then for the start and end, I'm going to bring in two multi dimensional sliders. Um, and so if I were to plug these in straight off the bat, it's not quite going to do what I want um, just because. We're only working in a positive uh, in a positive zero to one region, whereas um, seeing as I've got these multi-dimensional sliders and I'm trying to get a vec obtain a vector out of it, I might as well be able to get a full range of vectors out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this multi-dimensional slider and I'm going to change the x and y domains from zero to one to negative one to one. And so that won't look any different, but that means that my uh, the bottom left corner is now negative 1, negative 1, and the top corner is 1, 1, which is a lot better. All right, so now I'm just going to um, adjust this to uh, some sort of position. Maybe I'll put this maybe like halfway, maybe a little bit below halfway here. And then I'll put this a little, little bit below halfway here. And I'm also going to plug in another slider into my ratio over here and maybe I'll set that to somewhere around there I like that and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide my curve up so I'm gonna divide this curve and I'm gonna plug a slider into that give it some numbers, maybe I'll give it a max value of 20, make it an integer slider and alright so these are my base points of my bench what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna bring in two graph mappers and these are gonna define sort of a um, um what should we say like a an interpolative um, profile yeah the profile that we're going to interpolate between. So I'm going to drop down two of them. I'm going to switch them both to Bezier. And I'm going to plug a range component into both of those. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I'll plug in another slider. And I'll set that to a maximum of 20. But I'm only going to want it somewhere at around 5 for testing purposes. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now I'm sort of just gonna set this to some sort of shape that I want. Maybe something something like that. And then this one, maybe I'll do something like this. Alright. And then next we're going to Okay, so what we want to do is we, we need a method to interpolate between these two curves. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to construct a range component and this range component is going to take this integer slider as its input. That's key because um, we need basically one, <coughs> one interpolation value um, for each and every one of these points along this curve, which is why we use this slider. Um, and then I'm also just going to drop down a move for now because I want to move these points 
um, some amount. Let me grab a multiplier. And I don't know how much I want that to be. Maybe I'll set it to 50 for now. Plug that in there, and there. And then I am just going to graph this and increase this. So those are all my points. We've moved them in the Z direction. Now we just need to figure out their uh, their relative sort of X direction, I guess. What we're also going to do is we are going to actually instead of doing a divide, what I'm going to do is perpendicular frames. So same thing, I'll plug that curve in. I'm going to deconstruct the plane and that'll give me my origin point. And the way, the reason I'm using frames is because I want to also grab out the vector or the x vector from each of these planes. And also, okay, I don't think I've mentioned this before, I may have, I'm really not sure, but um, a really useful way to understand planes is um, the x, y, and z directions of a plane correspond to r, g, and b values. So your x direction of your plane is red, your green direction of your plane is, is uh, y, and your blue direction is Z. We don't have that in Rhino, but a lot of other 3D programs like 3ds Max and Maya and Cinema 4D have that. And every one of them obeys this XYZ RGB rule. Cool. So that was just a small side note. So I can see by looking at these planes that I want to extract the X vector. Oh, vector, sorry. And I don't, oh, I don't really need to extract it because I've already got it right here. So I'm just going, oh, sorry. I, I'm just going to plug in an amplitude for my x and now we need some sort of way to interpolate these and what I'm going to do okay I'm gonna use this range component here and I'm gonna set my domain from uh, from negative 1 to 1 and so then that's that's gonna give me uh, nine values between negative one and one. I'm going to take the absolute of that. Absolute is um, a mathematical function which turns any negative number into a positive number. So basically this uh, this range now goes from one to zero back to one. And so these numbers are going to correspond with like an interpolation value. Oops. And so what I'm going to grab is an expression. And this expression is going to be x times z plus y times 1 minus z. And so this z value is my sort of interpolation number. So I'm going to plug in a slider. And if I want, if I wanted half, half of each of these, it would um, oh, 0 0.5, so it would multiply x by 0 0.5 and y by 0 0.5. If I wanted just the y, then I would, then this would do um, x times 0 and then y times 1, or we could get 1 times x and 0 times y. And so when we plug all of these numbers in, and then we plug this in and this in, uh, note, we'll also need to graft this input, and then we should be able to add these vectors together. Um, oh, sorry, before I add them together, they need to be turned into, from, from number values into vector values. So that's what this vector amplitude does, and then I just add these two vectors together, and okay, it looks like we have maybe a slight mismatch in data here. We have nine values. Okay, we have nine trees with 11 values each, and then over here we've got six values. 
What is going on? Um, there's six here, six here, nine here, six there. Ah, okay, this is probably the issue here. Um, we need to graph these. And I also need to multiply this whole thing by some sort of uh, multiplier. So I'm going to multiply it by u. Then I'm going to add my u in. And I'll, uh, I'll increase this to maybe a maximum of 30. Quite like the number 30 for some reason with sliders. So there we go. I don't know how well you can tell at the moment, but we are getting we are getting sort of an interpolated point result. We can check that with a mesh from points, or we could check it with a surface from points. So I'll plug these in, I'll flatten this output, and my U and my V. Let's see, I believe this is my u value. So I'm going to drop an expression down and go u plus 1. And then I'll change this to u and this to v. Oops, I'll actually change it to v. Then I'll make a copy, can get rid of u there. Change this to v plus 1. Now remember, you don't actually need to do this, but I do this in the name of sort of being tidy with my definition. Alright, so if I were to now plug these in, we should get... Oh, okay. Not quite just yet. What do we have? We have 66 points. We've got 9 and 6. What is going on? 9 times 6, we should have... Hmm. Where are we getting a mismatch in our structure? Ah, yes. There we go. So I hadn't connected the integer into my frames yet, which was problematic. Alright, so there we go. There's the be beginning of our bench. Now I'm just going to increase this number here. Maybe I'll toy with this a little bit. You know what, that's probably a little too much. Maybe I'll keep it, yeah, about there somewhere is good. Alright, um, if I wanted I could plug this in here and just get a surface out of that, and we'll just have a look at how that's coming out. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's kind of working, but you can see that like, there's no way you'd be able to sit on that. That would be a bit uncomfortable, because it's it's not quite a flat, um, flat plane that you'd be sitting on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can sort of fix that, um, fix that error. Well, I'm, I'm going to call it an error, because it's, uh, it's not quite what we want. What we're going to do is, okay, before we graph this, we are going to use a relative differences component. Let me just turn these off. And so the relative difference is quite useful because basically it just looks at um, a number and the number after it and it'll tell you the difference between actually, and I don't want to do that for the vector, I want to do that for the um, I want to do that for the numbers. So I'm going to deconstruct it vector. I'm going to do relative difference for my x and for my y. And then we're going to do height hypotenuse of x and y. I'm going to plug those in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another expression, and this is going to be an if statement. So we're going to say if 
if x is greater than y, true, false. So if x is greater than some number y, let me just check what's coming out. So you can see um, what, we're, what we're sort of getting is um, a small difference for our first three numbers. So that moves along um, 0 0.12, then 0 0.5, and then 1.88, and then 4.92 between this point and this point. And so that tells me I want my slider, I don't know, I'll give it a max value of 5. Maybe I want it to be somewhere around 2. So if x is greater than 2, I want to manipulate um, that point so that I can move it up, giving us a much more level surface to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Boolean value. Actually, I'm going to do something a bit interesting with this. Um, Boolean values are either true or false and they can actually correspond to something else because a boolean value can also be an integer either 0 or 1 so what i'm going to use this integer value to do is to be a multiplier and you'll see what i mean in a sec Also want to do is let me see I want to divide this number here by oh sorry not I want to divide this number here this is my height and this is my number of divisions so this will give me the height difference between each consecutive point so I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to multiply this by another number, I'll give it a maximum of 2, that's going to be my z, but I'm also going to multiply this by this integer value. So as you can see at the moment, what it's doing is, okay, it looks like it's moving the wrong point because it looks and it says, ah, this point over here is uh, is too high, oh, is, is too fast, so I'm going to move that one up. So we could do one of two things. We could just give this a negative value, plug that in, and then if we were to remesh these, Um, okay, so that that's one way to do it, but you know what? I might as well show you a, a different way to do it. What I what I might think is a, a better way to do it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shift the list. So I'm going to drop down a slider and I'm going to make it between negative 1 and 1 because I'm not sure at the moment which direction I want to go in. So if I go negative 1, which point is that moving? I can't quite tell. Maybe I want to go 1. Yeah, that looks like the one I want to move. All right. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put down a capital clock subdivision after this mesh from points just to see how my bench is actually turning out. You know what? That is looking a lot better. Although, what I might want to do, just because I'm shifting this list and that might at times, like up around here, we could see that might be an issue. Um, so I might want to sort of bleed, I might want to sort of prevent that 
bleeding into the um, top to bottom. And so what I could do is I could throw down a replace items. So I could replace items at, let's see. You know what, actually, I don't think it matters too much if the top item moves. So I could just set the integer to zero. But you know what, okay, no, no, um, I might as well show you. Because you can't, for, um, for this replace items, you can't use the neat little negative one list item trick. Um, what you have to do is you have to go list length, and then you have to go L minus one. Oops, or is it X minus one? Yes. And then that'll be the correct number. Um, and we also want the first item to remain fixed. And so what we're going to replace, um, we also need to put in a number to replace it with. And so we want to replace it with a, um, a zero. So we're going to plug that into there as well. And then we can shift all of this over and plug that in. Whoops. What happened there? Um, what a that's a bit odd. So there's, there's the sort of the front face of our, um, of our bench. We're going to build up the back now. The way we're going to do that is we are going to rebuild this curve. And actually, um, what I do want to do is, let me see, where are the points? This should be the full list of points that we use. No, actually, we want to use these points in case some of them do change. So what I'm going to throw down is a list item. And I'm going to use item 0 and item negative 1. And I'm going to create another by arc. And so this is my start. This is my end, and my start and end tangents are all going to be multiples of this x direction here. Um, one is negative and one's positive. I'm not sure which one at the moment, but I assume... Okay, so my top vector wants to go this way. So that would be a positive x direction, and then this would be a negative x direction. Yes. All right, we almost got that right. We just need to graft this, and there we go. All right, now what I also want to do is I want to change how these curve around. I want to change the ratio, but I don't just want to do it with like a simple slider or anything. What I do want to do is I want to use this curve rebuild information. And I want to use that to get a curvature circle. And so I need the curve to evaluate and I also need a parameter along the curve. We can't quite use these parameters here because these correspond to the the by arc. So what we're going to use is a curve closest point. I'm going to plug the curve into there and the points from our deconstruct plane. And so this will give us the parameter. 
and so we should now get a couple of circles. Um, let me see. It's not giving me an awfully good result. Let me see if I can just uh, do something to get this a little bit nicer. have to make do with what we've got so let me find something that will kind of work jeez those that, that is really not what I wanted but oh well Let's see what's gonna happen So we're just getting a whole lot of really huge circles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remap these numbers. Actually, what I firstly need to do is I need to extract some information about these circles. What I need to extract, I can use using a deconstruct arc, and this will give me a radius value. So I'm going to plug that radius into my... Um, into my value to remap. I'm also going to grab a bounds component and I'm going to throw that in to my source domain and I'm also going to put down a custom domain over here. And so I'm just going to set this actually, no we don't need to change these sliders at all because we're just plugging in a ratio value which is 0 to 1. And so I'm going to plug this into my ratio here. Um, I'm also going to need to graph the result. Um, in fact, maybe I'll maybe I want the opposite. So what I can do is I can put this through a one minus x. Plug that in there. And let's see. Hmm. Not sure at the moment. Not something like that will do. Alright, so next I am going to divide all of these by arcs. I'm going to divide them by the same number of points that we have over here in our range. That's just going to make it convenient for me. And then I'm going to merge these two data items into one list. And the way I'm going to do that is just with a point node. So I'm going to plug this in, and then this in, and then I'm going to move these up here. Oops, and I'll just drag these over. Plug my points in here. And we're going to have a mismatch in the data because what we need to do is we need to multiply this by 2. So we're going to go 2 times x and then plug that in. Ooh, that is interesting. Maybe we need to do. 2 times v. Alright, so that's what we that's more or less what we want. And so now 
Now I can now I can turn all of this off. Or just not turn it off, preview it off. And okay, so at the moment the Catmull Clark is not working. And that's because when we created this by arc and then divided the points up, put a point here, and then put a point here. And what that does is it um it it puts one point right on top of the other. And so when you try to smooth that out, um, weaver bird or grasshopper doesn't know what to do when there's two points lying right on top of each other. So what we need to do is we need to um, we need to get rid of one of those points. We could, if you don't have weaver bird, what we could do is we could use a cull duplicate point over here, flatten that, and then plug that in there, but then we're going to get a mismatch in our point structure, so it requires a bit more effort. The simplest way is to use this mesh weld vertices component. This is another custom component which comes from, um, oh, it comes from, I think the component is called Uto. So if you do need to find it, just go online, go to Google, type in Grasshopper Uto plugin, Uto spelled E-U-T-O, and you should be able to find this. So now when we plug this in, there we go, getting a result. All right, so we are getting there. This bench still curves off a bit weirdly for me. So I'm going to increase, maybe it's not that value, it's this one here. Um, a little bit lower. Yeah, like somewhere around there. All right, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our rebuild curve but we're going to make a separate one over here. And what we're going to use this for um, is for finding planes. So we're going to use perp frames again. And I'm going to plug in a slider and I'm going to give it a maximum value of 100. Plug that into my number, bump it up to some ludicrous amount, and then we're going to do mesh sections. Um, not mesh sections, sorry, we're going to do a mesh plane intersection. So the mesh here, the planes here, and there we go. We're getting the whole lot of cuts through this mesh. Um, at the beginning and end, you might have some issues with sort of open curves, so I'll just set it to mine being open just so I can show you how we fix that. Um, the way we fix that is we we can test whether a curve is closed or not. And if it's not, we can just cull it. So we'll plug the curves in, plug the cull pattern in, and there you go, you've gotten rid of it. Also, the reason why I threw down this rebuild is because we've plugged in a ratio value into our by arc in the beginning, which means that we might have a huge arc over here and then just a small one over here. So this rebuild curve helps to sort of uniform, uh, create more uniformity along the curve. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we are going to turn this into a smooth curve. So I'm not sure whether I want a NURBS curve or an interpolate curve at the moment. So I'll plug, oh wait, I also need to explode these curves. And so we're going to get a whole list of points out, plug my points into my NURBS curve, as well as my interpolate curve, and let's have a look. I also need to turn off Oops, these. All right, so we'll look at these one at a time. This is my NURBS curve. This is my interpolate curve. You know what, they're really not looking that bad. Um, key thing to note also is you want to turn periodic curve to true.
this just means that our periodic means uh, whether it's closed or not. So if we set it to true, it will close the curve and not give us a weird sort of kink at the end, which you might see sometimes. Um, either of these are doing fine for me. Maybe I'll just take the nerves curve. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to turn this into a planar surface. I can do that just using the surface component. Flatten this. And now we need to quite simply just extrude these. And the way we are, oh, we need to throw down an extrude component. Plug in our geometry to extrude. And we need a direction. We can't just plug in an x, y, or z because we need a direction relative to each and every one of these surfaces. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a component called isplanar. Test the surface for planarity. If it is planar, it will give us a plane right at the center of that surface. And then we need to deconstruct all of these planes because we need the z vector. And so then we're just going to put down a multiplier. I'm going to put down a number to multiply by. Um, I'm not sure how thick I want these at the moment, so I'll set some arbitrary number, plug these in. And you know what? It looks like 10 is going to be far too much. I'll try 1. No, that's too much. 0 0.8. Oh, that's looking quite nice. Alright, cool. So if I were to now bake this out, we can see how it's turned out. There we go. This is our parametric bench. So now we have got a lot of control over this. Um, let's see how much of it is directly editable. I've still got my by arcs in the beginning. Can change the shape of those. Um, I've got the ratio of my by arc. Um, I've got the shape or the interpolation shape. Um, I've got this sort of seat height adjust parameter over here and this is my um, like my threshold um, what else do we have um, we have our number of planes and we also have our our thickness of each extrusion so there we go this has been a tutorial on how to create this parametric bench hope you enjoyed it